Hey everybody, this is Kyle with Abrupto Security, and today we're continuing on the Hack the Box starting point series with the Explosion Box. Let's get going. We have Hack the Box open here. I'm going to go ahead and grab our IP. Jump right into Cali. We're going to do a sudo nmap, put it in our IP. We're going to expand this out to get ports between like 1 and let's say 10,000. Then do a dash SV to get our version number. All right, I'm going to let nmap run real quick. All right, nmap has finished. It looks like we have five different ports that are open that we can see, being 135, 139, 445, 3389, and 5985. Let me go over what each one of those are real quick. Five, this is Windows RPC or remote procedure call. And this is communication between a client and server that uh, is needed for exchange. Usually uh, this is when you have clients or users that are VPNing into your network and then they need access into an exchange server, NetBIOS. This is a protocol used for file and print sharing. Next is port 445. This is typically your SMB or your server message block. Also another sharing protocol. We've explored this in previous videos if you'd like to check those out. Next is port 3389. And this is your Windows RDP or remote desktop protocol. And this is something where people cannot have to be physically on their machine and can use a Windows service and protocol to remote into that machine. This is something that we're probably going to look to exploit if we have any kind of given credentials or possibly an open anonymous account. Finally, it's port 5985. This is your WinRM or Windows Remote Management. And this just allows administrators to remotely run scripts. So since we see that we have Windows RDP possibly available to us, we're going to try to do some different logins. You may be familiar with services such as TeamViewer or AnyDesk if you've ever used those before in order to RDP into a system. You may have actually directly used the Windows client RDP service. Uh, Linux has something that's kind of similar that is available to us. It's called XFree RDP. XFree RDP is a GUI service that is on Linux, and you can type this in by doing XFree RDP. It usually will come pre-installed if you're using something like Kali. Just press enter, and we can see different examples that we can do and all the different uh, toggles and flags that we can use. But if we take a look at these examples here at the bottom, uh, we can do an XFree RDP. We can designate a specific user, the password, the size of the window. The V here is gonna be what is our target IP. In this specific example, they have a port specified, but we may not actually need to do that. I'm gonna go back into Hack the Box here and answer some of these questions. What does the three letter acronym RDP stand for? That was remote desktop protocol. What is a three letter acronym that refers to interaction with the host through a command line interface? That is CLI. What about graphical user interface interactions? That is a GUI or a GUI. What is the name of an old remote access tool that came without encryption by default and listens to TCP port 23? If we want to take a look here, we can look up something like a port cheat sheet. I've used these many, many times. Uh, first link here, we just have something over available on Pinterest. Ironically enough, port 23 is Telnet. Go back in. TCP port 23, Telnet. And I would highly suggest if you were very unfamiliar with the ports, I would print out a cheat sheet, have it just in front of you on the wall, whatever it may be on your desk, just so you have that openly available. You're gonna to wanna to reference that whenever you start going through these enumerations of different nmap scans. What is the name of the service running on port 3389 TCP? We're going to be able to view that if we go back in. I'm going to scroll up to where we ran our nmap. And 3389, the service here was MSWBT server. Control Shift C to copy, paste that back in. All right, so now we're at a good stopping point. Let's go ahead and go back in. Let's try to start enumerating what we're going to be doing here with 
XPRI RDP. All right, so if we go ahead and take a look at the examples here, as mentioned before, we're going to do XPRI RDP. And I'm not going to enter anything else. I don't really want to mess with any of my settings currently. Let's just see if we can get access using the slash V in the colon with the IP. Let me go back in. I'm going to grab that IP one more time. And we're going to do X free RDP. And we're going to do the forward slash V colon and then input our IP address. So let's press enter. Okay, so what we are seeing here is that we have a certificate name mismatch. So what a certificate mismatch is, is when the common name does not actually match what we're trying to get access into. If you ever go into a web browser and you type in the name of a website and it says, hey, you should not actually trust this website, it's a similar different uh, protocol. We will also note that there is no username set and it's just given our username login of Cali. So we may need to actually specify a user if it doesn't allow us any kind of anonymous access. So at the bottom here it says, do you trust the above certificate? Well, XFree RDP actually offers us a chance to ignore certificates entirely. So I'm gonna go ahead and press up one more time and we can actually add another flag here being slash cert colon ignore. Okay, so now it's just giving us a still no username set being our login name of Cali. It's asking for a domain. Uh, if we would like to, we can try to enumerate whatever the domain may be using something like NSLOOKUP and then inputting our IP. It's gonna say we can't find whatever the specified uh, domain is. So instead of going through all of that, we're gonna just try to actually guess whatever a possible username may be. So we can just do a slash U flag and we can enumerate whatever user may possibly be available. Usernames could be something like admin admin, anonymous supports. Let's do something like administrator. It's going to ask for a password. Now there's a chance by default that the administrator password may not actually be set. So I'm just gonna press enter here and see what happens. And we have access into our desktop. This is our free RDP. This is the server manager. Uh, so we are the administrator on the server. And over here on the desktop, it looks like we have a flag. I'm gonna open up that notepad and there is our answer. Let's go back in and answer the rest of these questions real quick. What is the switch used to specify the target host IP address when using XFree RDP? That is the slash V colon. What username successfully returns a desktop projection to us with a blank password? Admin is straighter is what we just logged in with. And submit our root flag. Go back in, copy this real quick, and paste it right back in. Bam, we've found the box. Hey, congratulations on your continued success. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks again, and see you next time.